once around Epsilon Indy. Got this lovely artist's impression for the title slide of this very interesting system. Located in the constellation of Indus here, we have Epsilon Indy, a fairly modest magnitude 4.7 star. And the Hipparchos satellite was able to prove this was close by, just 12 light years away. And back in 1847, Darest noticed that it had a very high proper motion. So its position against the other stars was changing year to year. Um, and he looked on a couple of star maps eight years apart and could tell that it had changed position. And that is typical of nearby stars. This high proper motion is just because they are close to us. So he was the first person to be onto the fact this was one of the sun's near neighbors. And in fact, we have this uh, pseudo 3D plot of the region of stars around the sun, the sun in the center, Alpha and Proxima Centauri very close by, Barnard's star, some of the others that we might talk about in other talks, and Epsilon Indy down there at the bottom, an orange dot. Very appropriate orange dot because it is an orange K-class main sequence star, just 4,649 Kelvin, so cooler than the sun, around about 80% of the mass and 70% of the radius, but that lower mass goes with a much lower overall power output, just 21% of the total power. And on the good old Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, there it is, just in the top end of the orange star group. Somewhat cooler and fainter than the sun, but nevertheless, consuming hydrogen in its core, turning it into helium, and it's only about 3.5 billion years old, so somewhat younger than the sun, but with an expected lifetime, given its mass, of around 20 billion years. So this one's going to be around for quite some time. Now, what's really interesting about it is the companions that have been discovered. And this is a pair of brown dwarfs, failed stars, large gaseous bodies that have pulled themselves together under gravity, but only achieved enough mass to be warm, but not trigger nuclear fusion in the core. So we have Epsilon Indy BA and BB in orbit around each other. And these are both brown dwarfs classed as T type, T1 and T6 respectively with 30 and 50 times the mass of Jupiter. Now, I think you have to get to 75 times the mass of Jupiter before there is enough mass to generate the pressures and temperatures in the core for a star to ignite hydrogen burning properly, the proton-proton chain to form helium and become an M-class red dwarf star and we have the little diagram at the bottom showing an m class red dwarf and then at the right the planet jupiter and the three categories of brown dwarfs these intermediate missing links between gas giant planets and stars classed as l t and y and these two are the intermediate ones t with temperatures at their surface of 1300 and 900 degrees kelvin um, if they were a bit bigger, they would become L-class, and the reason for that is more gravity creates enough pressure to trigger some limited nuclear fusion of things like deuterium and even a little bit of lithium burning, if you have enough lithium, to uh, raise the temperature a bit. And uh, so you can get a little bit hotter, but not become a full-blown star until you get to 75. So these... Uh, orbit each other, and then the pair orbit around the main star at a distance of 1,460 astronomical units, so a reasonable distance. And we have this fantastic James Webb telescope, I'm sorry, Hubble Space Telescope picture uh, of the star in the center with an obscuring uh, metal object to blot out some of the light to reveal in the top left there the pair of brown dwarfs 
revealed with the HST NICMOS instrument, um, shown as two separate little dots. So we've got an artist's impression just showing what's going on here. The whole lot's about 12 light years from the sun. The pair of brown dwarfs orbit each other at a distance of about two astronomical units, two times the distance from the Earth to the sun, so 300 million kilometers. And they're about 1,500 kilometers or so away from the main uh, star there, Epsilon Indy A. Now, Epsilon Indy A also has a planet. So this is called Epsilon Indy A lowercase b. And this is a super Jupiter. It has a, a mass of 6.31 times the mass of Jupiter. So not massive enough yet to really be classed as a brown dwarf. It would have to be about 13 Jupiter masses to make one of those Y-class smallest brown dwarfs but nevertheless quite a monster. And this actually makes it the second closest Jupiter-like planet to the solar system. The record holder is currently a planet B in orbit around Epsilon Eridani. Uh, there's a once around talk about Epsilon Eridani, which I recommend you go and have a look at. And this guy, Epsilon Indy AB, is in... A an elliptical orbit taking 171.3 years. And this time it is a James Webb Space Telescope picture. Again, we've blotted out the central star, and the dot there is a direct image of this super Jupiter planet. Got another couple of images in different wave bands. Again, James Webb with the MIRI instrument, and these are at 10 and a half microns and 15 and a half microns showing again the central star marked with a large uh, uh, graphic star and then the actual planet shown as a bright disk around it quite a lot of disturbance and what looks like dust as well but uh, that's another story and so we have an artist's impression of course of this super jupiter planet orbiting around the main star now, again, the uh, Epsilon Indy seems to be moving around the galaxy with a whole group of 16 other Population 1 stars. Population 1 meaning that they are uh, late formers. They've been formed recently and consist of the more dirty chemical composition. And these... 16 stars seem to all be moving around the galaxy together, suggesting that they were formed together back in the day and uh, possibly pointing to some galactic merger or perhaps a star cluster that was boiled away and disrupted. And that's still an active area of galactic archaeology to understand this Epsilon Indy moving group. And so I will leave you with the HST Nikmas picture, which I think is fantastic, showing this pair of what a red pair of brown dwarfs that are really close to the sun in terms of uh, the overall galactic structure. So right in our backyard, and that's once around Epsilon Indy.